What's going on guys? My name is Richard and welcome back to another Stock Market Outlook video. Before we get into it, I do ask that you hit the like button down below. It really does help me out and my channel by letting YouTube know that this video is worth watching. And before we get into the analysis of the indexes, I want to briefly cover the sentiment surveys I post every single week on Twitter. And last week I highlighted the severe shift from 47% bullish to only 23% bullish. And uh, this made me realize that people were still very, um, very careful in this market and that we could have a nice rally this past week. And sure enough, we did. And this week so far, we've gone from 23% bullish all the way up to 46.7%. So once again, this is a big shift. Uh, now that doesn't mean that the stock market is gonna fall next week, but it could mean that we are in for a consolidation sometime soon, maybe a pullback to the 21 EMA. So uh, keep that in mind. And I also wanna talk about um, the overall bulls versus bear sentiment um, that's posted on IBD. And you can see that once again, we had that crossover from um, the uh, numbers of bears to the numbers of bulls. And once again, that helped confirm that market bottom. So uh, this is one reason actually to be bullish in the long term, and I am, uh, because you can see we're nowhere near that 60% bullish line uh, that caused us to have this fall. So I always like to keep my eye a bit on this because it is helpful sometimes when we've got those extremes in sentiment. Um, so with that covered, let's go ahead and jump to a weekly chart of the NASDAQ index. And I wanna talk about how we had a nice breakout of this three week tight pattern. Um, and this is exactly what I talked about last week. And that's kind of the um, thing that I saw that gave me the indication that we could have a nice rally this week because I saw a lot of leaders basing and seemed ready to break out of this pattern. Um, and once again, we did, we posted a around 6% gain on the NASDAQ overall. And we have a really nice bar right here with uh, the open below the close and then a nice closing range uh, right near the high. So this is the ideal setup on a weekly chart for the NASDAQ. And it's nice to see that the other indexes were participating as well. So first covering the S&P 500, we had the same three week type pattern, another breakout, um, although it's not quite as strong as the NASDAQ. Uh, but overall we gained three and a half percent. And moving over to the Russell 2000, we have a similar pattern. So overall, the Russell is still consolidating and you can see we're about five weeks tight in this consolidation. And if this can start continuing upwards and break through the 50 day moving average, uh, that will be the ideal scenario for me. And that will basically create an easy dollar environment as Mark Minervini likes to say. So that's kind of it from the weekly perspective. And now let's take a look at the NASDAQ day by day. Um, so first of all, we had a positive expectation breaker on this Monday, because as I talked about in my last video, um, the expectation given the close on Friday was that we are gonna continue lower. And we did in fact gap down, but we had a beautiful recovery and a nice close right near the top of the range. So this is a great positive reversal and we reclaimed that 10 day moving average. The momentum for Monday carried on into Tuesday where we had a gap up, an attempted breakout, but we fell back right near the open of the day, which isn't a positive, but overall this still is a good bar because it continued on with that momentum from Monday. Uh, then on Wednesday, we once again gapped up and kind of had a similar day to Tuesday where we tried to move up further, but instead got knocked down right near the open. So still overall a positive up day, um, but it would be better if we had a nice closing range in here. On Thursday, we had once again a very similar day, a gap up and a better close because it's right at the open. And overall, we um, took over that 9,000 level on the NASDAQ. So that was great to see. And then we had a great finish to the week on this Friday where we had a gap up, a small um, drop down, and then a very strong close right near the high of the day. So um, really an ideal week after the consolidation pattern right here. Um, I would like to see more volume coming in uh, but overall, still a positive. And as I said, it's nice to see the other indexes contributing as well. If the Russell and SPY can really get involved into this rally, um, that will create a whole bunch of opportunities. Um, so as always, I also want to cover a few different ETFs. First, taking a look at the FFTY, which is the Innovator IBD 50 ETF. We had a nice week as well. Overall, we gained, let's see, 
um, 6.86%. So gross stocks had a great week, and I'm sure you felt that in your own portfolios. Um, and day by day, it had a nice um, close on this Monday, as the NASDAQ did as well, and overall a nice continuation and breakout through this here. Um, I would like to see that the 50-day would curl up um, or flatten up and curl up, uh, but you can see the 10-day, the 21 EMA, and the 30-day are all moving up as well. So we're very close to a nice short-term uptrend on the FFTY. Also, taking a look at GLD, the um, gold ETF, you can see it's kind of basing right now. So um, this could be primed for a breakout because the Bollinger Bands are getting pretty tight on this right-hand side. Um, and you can see you had some nice Bollinger Band entries right here. So um, I talked about this in my last video, which was my trading rules for my entry setups. Um, and these rules can be applied to any type of equity, not just stocks. So um, you could have entered right here, had a nice um, gain going into uh, the end of last week. So um, if you're one to buy gold, this could be setting up for a nice breakout above these prior pivots right here. Um, and lastly, I want to talk about um, the XLF, the financials, which is still basing. Um, you can see it overtook its 50-day moving average last week, which is a positive. Uh, but along with the other major indexes, I do want to see this move up and support the overall rally. And to round off the indexes, let's talk about the VIX, which was another reason to be a bit bearish last week. Uh, but you can see we declined nicely all throughout the week, and we're back down to 27.98, which is a level that we haven't reached um, since all the way back in late February. So this is definitely a positive for me. You want to see that volatility decrease if you are a trend follower. Um, so those are the overall indexes and how they're performing. Um, overall, it's nice to see breakouts in both the um, NASDAQ this week and also the S&P 500. And I also want to say that we've got a green dot on the S&P 500. And I don't think we have one on the Russell, but I think it's pretty close to a stochastic cross. Um, so yeah, we don't have a green dot yet, uh, but another good day um, and that should appear. All right, so now that we've talked about the indexes, let's go over how my watch list from this past weekend performed. And if you don't wanna miss my next watch list, please go ahead and subscribe below. Um, I usually have a bunch of decent performing stocks. Uh, they're not always performers like uh, Bill was this week or LVGO where they're up 42 and 56%, uh, but we usually have some 10% gainers in there. So go ahead and subscribe and I post those every single Sunday. Um, so overall we had Bill, LVGO, the top performers. Team had a nice breakout, which I bought right after it broke through this prior pivot. Um, Net had a nice move and then a breakdown on this past Friday after its earnings report. Uh, Coop had a really nice breakout as well from this prior uh, pivot right here. Uh, Shopify has been doing fantastic. This could be really a true market leader. And otherwise, we had some very solid performances. AMD started moving up. Uh, Vertex started moving up from this short term higher low. And overall, the only loser was Chewy. And um, there's nothing nothing crazy going on right here. It seems like it's just forming another base. So uh, look for this to move up, potentially have a green dot right here as it moves up this right-hand side, um, and that could be a potential entry. So that is how my last watch list did. Again, if you don't wanna miss my next one, go ahead and subscribe down below, and I post those every single Sunday. Um, so now let's go ahead and check out the IBD Big Picture article from investors.com. Uh, so overall, they say the stock market rally finds another gear. The Nasdaq rises above 9,000 despite the weak jobs report. Um, and overall, the market has really been ignoring this data completely, even though it's the worst, um, the worst data reports in history, uh, which is very sad to see. But once again, it's important to remember that the stock market is not the economy. And in fact, the stock market kind of forecasts what the economy will be. Um, so hopefully because we have this strong rally, uh, we'll see these numbers improve in the coming months. Um, so overall, they talk about how on Friday, strong gains, um, where the NASDAQ rose 1.6%, uh, and for the week, 6%. Um, and you can see its 50-day moving average has started to point higher after a two-month downtrend. And uh, this is another reason to be optimistic and bullish. Um, and they also say that a pullback wouldn't be surprising um, at all. So uh, keep that in mind. And you can see that they say that it could pull back to its 21 day or 50 day moving average and not really mess up this uptrend. So keep that in mind. Um, and you can see that the distribution day count is still light 
and we actually dropped a distribution day off the NASDAQ because the index rallied more than 5% from that closing price. Um, so overall, only one distribution day on the S&P 500. This is significant. That's showing you that institutions aren't selling at this time like we saw right before this huge drop. Um, and moving down, we can see, um, once again, they talk about the disconnect between the stock market and the economy. Um, and um, overall, they talk about how retail stocks are up, which is a good sign. You had some good earnings from Wayfair, Etsy, and uh, eBay and SFM. Um, overall, they also talk about CMG, Lululemon. These are very strong stocks. Um, and they also talk about some great earnings reports and breakouts from Chegg, PayPal, FTNT, TWLO. Um, Axon and Peloton. Um, and it would be a good sign for the market if these breakouts keep working and you see follow on days on above average volume. Um, that would be the ideal scenario that shows you that institutions have conviction in these companies and they're not just buying one breakout and letting it fall back um, and potentially selling after those huge gains. They have conviction in these companies and they're in it for the long term. Uh, so that is pretty much the IBD big picture article. And now let's head over to wishingwellball.com and check up on the GMI signal. And you can see that it's been green since April 27th, which is a positive sign. Um, and overall, we are in the 22nd day of the QQQ short-term uptrend. And he also talks about some other green line breakouts from Vapo, LVGO. Um, Mark Minervini on Twitter has been talking about Vapo. And you can see a strong breakout, huge volume coming in. Um, and you can see the VCP action on the weekly chart right here a little bit. So uh, that's always cool to see what Mark is picking. And also LVGO has been very strong. I've been talking about this a lot. Um, and it had a green line breakout on this past uh, in this past week. So overall, that is pretty much all the material I wanted to cover in this video. Um, I am still bullish. I think this is a confirmed uptrend, although I am ready for a short term pullback in the near future. And you should have a plan for whatever happens, whether we gap down 10% on Monday or we continue on with this rally. Uh, but that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to leave a like down below. It really does help me out. And I'll see you guys in future videos.